So now we're gonna look at some more COPD. So chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, right? Two irreversible conditions here, chronic bronchitis and emphysema, right? So these are irreversible, meaning that, you know, usually when people have this condition, they're diagnosed with this condition, it's over, right? So they don't have a normal life with, in terms of the respiratory rate, right? So everything is all over, right? But again, just to be more optimistic is if, if, it's, if the symptoms are controlled, usually people can have a normal life afterwards, right? And so chronic obstructive and bronchitis, emphysema. So chronic obstructive condition comes usually a, with a span of three months of, of chronic cough, right, in a consecutive yearly routine, right? So if someone has a cough for three months, the next year they have another three months of coughing, usually that's diagnosed with chronic bronchitis. Emphysema, on the other hand, is different, right? So it's a hyperdilation of your alveoli, right? So this leads to an increase in compliance, and that increase in compliance leads to problems with expiration, right? So they can inspire normally, right? Everything's fine, right? And However, the expiration becomes a big, very, very problematic, right? And so some signs and symptoms of, and comparison of the chronic bronchitis versus emphysema is usually people that are obese experience this problem, obesity, people that have um, cyanosis. So chronic bronchitis leads to cyanosis. What else happens? You have an increased red blood cell formation for hemoglobin. So you have a erythroblastosis, erythroblastosis, where your blood body begins to begin, begin creating more red blood cells, right? Because you're experiencing these instances of hypoxia, right? So hypoxia, low oxygen, because of this cough, right? You experience also edema. So systemic edema is a very, another very common condition that they use, that they see with people with, with uh, chronic bronchitis. And what else do we see about this? Systemic edemas and also wheezing, wheezing in the actual cough itself. So the wheezing in the actual cough is monitored with the stethoscope when, when uh, the doctor uses it to measure the different lung capacity. Emphysema, on the other hand, is different, right? So you have the hyperdilation of the blood vessels, of the, oh, not blood vessels, alveoli, right? And so the way certain symptoms can be diagnosed, they have actually a very quiet, quiet chest, right? So it's a very quiet, you can't really hear anything using a stethoscope. Um, what else do they have? When you look at these actual conditions, when you use the physiologic spirometer, right? So you want to look at the, the lung capacity. So you remember, they have a very low ratio, right? It's a very low FE, what was it? F force expiratory volume over force vital capacity, right? So this is less than 0 0.8 condition, right? So usually th this affects older patients, right? So they're older, um, they experience severe dyspnea. So what was dyspnea? So dyspnea was trouble in this breathing or painful breathing, difficulty breathing. The uh, dips, yeah, and also what's really important about these patients is if you want to diagnose them with certain kind of, after if after you figured out they have very low uh, of this force expiratory volume ratio to force vital capacity, you you take an X-ray of them and you take some kind of radiographic imaging, so we can say X-ray, right? And this X-ray is showing basically a excessive inflation of the lungs. So you will actually notice a flattening of the diaphragm, a hyper flattened diaphragm in the actual x-ray. So these are the very common signs and symptoms of this. So again, both of these are caused by either air pollutants or majority of case smokers, right? So this is the reason why I don't smoke, right? You don't wanna get these COPDs because these are irreversible and these can lead to a lot of problems later on in the road, in, in, in the, in the road right? Because you can, this can lead to certain kind of cardiovascular problems later on because this lack of oxygen leads to a lot of pathological abnormalities later on, okay? So bronchitis, this irritation, you have this hyperinflammation in the bronchus Emphysema, on the other hand, this is a loss of the actual integrity of the lungs. So there is an there is a enzyme called alpha one elastin trypsin. 
right? See this antitrypsin deficiency. So this is a um, antitrypsin. And so when you don't have this, there is a excessive breakdown for these patients with emphysema of these elastin molecules, right? So the connective tissue becomes very, very soft, right? So that's why you have this excessive compliance, right? And so this excessive compliance leads to the actual abnormal increase of the alveoli, which makes the compliance high and this ratio that we have very low, okay? And so both of these are obstructive conditions. So if I were to draw a little line here, both of these are obstructive conditions. So this chronic bronchitis can also be measured through these different ratios that we have here. And so when you have this dyspnea, what does it lead to? Because you have this instance of hypoxia. So both of them experience hypoxia. You have excessive levels of hyperventilation. You have um, hypoxemia, hypoxemia, right? So what is hypoxemia? Low, so hypoxia is low oxygen. Hypoxemia is low oxygen in the blood. And this eventually can lead to instances of respiratory acidosis. So respiratory acidosis is where your lung, the pH in your pulmonary circuit, in your circuit becomes, the pH becomes very low. All right, so this is a good comparison between the chronic bronchitis and emphysema.